The Nollywood cinematic atmosphere is once again lit with some historical excitement with the recent announcement that Amina is coming to Netflix. Ooh, rhymes man, rhymes. Excitement, announcement, ah, who's a shy? Yeah, and we know it's been a long time coming, like a four years wait. I mean, if I've had a child since the announcement, the child would have learned cursing by now. <laughs> Written by Oke Ogunjofor, popularly known for the 1992 classic Living in Bondage and helmed by award-winning director Izu Ojuku, best known for historical epics like 76 and Sitanda. Sometimes the name attached to a film is enough to get you hyped. Izu Ojuku has created some remarkable movies. At the core of his films are events and characters that viewers care about. With his last outing, 76, Ojuku took viewers back to the 70s, sparking a bygone era to life with impressive imagery, which by the way is currently on the Netflix library for Nollywood movies. Persistently curious, Ojuku constantly looks out for the small details that sell the emotion and underlining theme to the audience. So in all honesty, yes, he is enough reason to be excited. But for a movie that was set to be released back in 2017, what really kept it in the shelf that it's just now that it's getting to see the light of day? And why is it going to Netflix and not the cinemas? These are some of the questions we all need to know before we jump on to see Amina come forth of November. In 16th century Zazao, now Zaria, Nigeria, Amina must utilize her military skills and tactics to defend her family's kingdom, based on a true story. Now, as much as we are all excited to see Amina on Netflix, we still can't beg but ask this question, why the long wait? When the first trailer for Amina was released back in 2017, we were all excited to see this historical tale of the warrior princess turned beloved queen take the stage. So what happened? Why wasn't it released that time? Why was it shelved this long? It wasn't like the pandemic started that back that it couldn't play in cinemas. So what really happened? Well, if anyone in the production is ready to tell us, we are all ears. And according to a Nollywood actor and producer Choma Idigo, she said Izuo Juku always has this thing where he likes to shelf movies and goes through extensive post-production polishing the movie so well so it comes out in all its glory. Why Netflix and not cinemas? We've seen cases of movies going past their initial release date and still making it to cinemas. A recent example, though the pandemic had a big part to play, is No Time To Die which was scheduled for release in November 2019 but was postponed all through to 2021. Or the Chris Hemsworth movie Red Dawn that was supposed to come out back in 2009 but was later released in 2012 and then some. So why not still release it in cinemas? Why Netflix? Oh well, maybe it's a case of a bird at hand, not knowing how audiences will receive it and be better to get some of that Netflix cheddar might just be the reason. But hey, what do we know? You know nothing, Jon Snow. Cultural Appropriation Set in 16th century northwest of Nigeria from the trailer, it seemed obvious that it wouldn't have Hausa as the major language of the movie. This is also ascribed to the fact that some of the cast are not known major Hausa speakers and even if they are looking for an ensemble of Kanewood actors and the likes of Lucy Ame who obviously can speak Hausa, would the movie be able to keep the tone and language structure of the 16th century period to sound authentic given the linguistic transformation the language has undergone? But hey. They won't be the first. A lot of historical epics follow that route. Everybody wants to speak English, right? Yeah. More English, more audience, more money. Ka -ching! If I speak perfect English, she sells seashells by the seashore. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled pepper. Round the ragged blocks, the rack. Oh! More historical and biographical stories. Given the success of Nigeria historical stories such as Half of Yellow Sun, 76, the 2020 Frank Rajas, Legend of Inipi, and with the underlining tone of feminism and Amina coming to Netflix, would it be safe to assume that more historical epics involving women such as Emota of Benin or the legendary Yoruba tale of Moremi Ajasoro would be explored to be viewed on a wider screen? Well, we'll get to find out. Is it a reimagination or would it stay true to the law? As much isn't really known about the historical figure of the 16th century save for historical record of Mohammed Bello and others passed down through oral tradition and even those in the history book, but some facts are still clear. Amina is ascribed to be the founder of Zao Zao, expanding the territory of Hausa people to the largest borders in history. So is it truly going to be totally based off the true life story or event as stated in the synopsis or would they add some jara just for dramatic value? I mean, sometimes you don't really know where the real story stops and where the bullshit continues, or vice versa. Now, talking about the cast, 
The movie is loaded with some of Nollywood finest, from the lead Lucy Amir, who every film lover would remember from Barriga Sugar, says she went through extensive training and fight choreography before she could embody the iconic historical character that is Amina. And other of the cast include Alinuhu as Danjuma, Claron Chukura as Zumbura, and Yakub Mohammed as Birde. For the little we have seen, there's nothing forced about their acting, but we hope it turns out organic and smooth given that these actors look like they fit perfectly in their respective roles. No woman has ever sat on the throne of Zaza. And you will not be an exception. So, what's your take on this? Why do you think Amina was held back from release till now? Are you excited to see Amina on Netflix? Let us know in the comment section below. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up to help our channel. For more videos like this, subscribe to Popcorn and Reels, hit the bell icon to get notified for a fresh video and remember, wherever you are, wherever you are, never ever stop watching movies and supporting Hollywood movies as well. Catch you guys soon. Hmm, that's how our man Bluetooth only kissed Lucy Amel and could not perform his duty as her on-screen boyfriend to press breasts in Lenin Coves. Hmm. Cause he didn't want to get banned from church. I can't believe the director was telling him, act, press breast, press breast. But no, weak.